Hi everyone and welcome to my video on rates of change. Another video in the Mathematical Methods Units 1 and 2 course here in Australia. Thank you so much for joining me. Now behind me you can see our learning objectives and it says what? Understand what it means to be by average rate of change. Understand what it means to be an instantaneous rate of change. Know how to find both of these for a range of questions. That last one's fairly obvious. Now, if you want to, you can download the uh, lesson notes from mathsguru.com, and there are videos in this whole series. And again, don't worry if you're not in Australia, this is universal. Maths is a constant, lol, um, which basically this will apply to all sorts of your courses. Recap of past learning. Well, basically, the last part of the lesson was finding tangents and normals to curves. This is building on a massive section previously for differentiation what it is, how to do it, and why we are doing it. I think the important part here is the why we are doing it. This one is sort of, again, a little one of those interesting ones, because in exams we'll be like, oh, find the instantaneous rate of change, or find the average rate of change. And these are silly little things that just trick you, but it doesn't need to, because an average rate of change we've met before, and as we've said here, it says the average rate of change all right, is defined as the gradient of a straight line joining two points. Ah, so I always like to draw just a little bit of graph and I always draw my standard y equals x squared. But if we think of this as my, my graph, for example, let's have it like that. I know it's not a standard x squared graph, but if I wanted to find the average rate of change between those two values, say one, and two, the first thing we would do is we would find the values of those two coordinates. Okay, we would find what they were. So let's say that was, I don't know, 1, 2, and let's say that's 2, 5. Just two coordinates I've made up off the top of my head, because theoretically then that would be the graph of x squared plus 1. Yep, that works for me. All right, so imagine that we've got that function there, and we wanted to find the average rate of change between 1 and two. Well, what we would do is we've, as you said here, it is a gradient joining those two lines. Well, hold on a moment. If I'm joining two lines, points together, I'm trying to find a gradient. What's the gradient of a straight line? It is nothing more than rise over run. And the official notation is this, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Well, what they're really trying to say here is, changing his pen color to, let's say, purple, let's imagine that's my point a, and that's my point B. So realistically speaking, B minus A is nothing more than the difference between those two points there, that change in sort of run. And then what's this FB business? Well, again, if I'm putting two into my function, then what comes out is five. This is just another way of saying the Y value when I put B in and the Y value when I put A in, or, or Y2 minus Y1. So again, this is another way of doing it. And people get so confused in maths with the notation. Now, the other thing that you've got to be very careful of in an exam is when they say instantaneous rate of change. The instantaneous rate of change, and I'm going to say to you now, generally speaking, we don't write the word instantaneous. Whenever you are looking for rate of change, it is basically saying the value of the gradient of the tangent to a graph at one point. Hold on a moment. That's a lot of language. Ah, so just differentiate it and find the gradient at that point. Absolutely. So a rate of change is about one point. All right. And again, the only way we can do one point is to find the gradient of the tangent at that point. Right. So with that in mind, let's have a look at some questions. For the function with the rule f of x equals x squared plus 2x, find the average rate of change. So, OK, I'm looking at this one here and I'm like, well, I can see the average rate of change. That's looking for a gradient. So in this situation, I'd want my gradient of f of b minus f of a, all on b minus a. So what's my a and b values? Well, they've given it here in interval notation, right? So they're saying between two and three, inclusive. So we now know in that situation, my b value would be three, and my a value would be two. Okay, so that's now going to be three minus two. Thank you very much, Cambridge, for letting me use your examples. This is great. Uh, f of b. Oh, that's okay. All I'm going to do now is substitute my b value of three into here. So that's going to become 3 squared, which is 9, plus 2 lots of 3, which is 6. 9 plus 6, I'm hoping, is 15. I'm going to take away uh, f of a. So I'm now going to substitute my a value into here. So a says so 2 squared is 4, plus 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. There we go. So 15 minus 8 is going to give me 7 
on one. So in this case, my gradient, oh, <laughs> don't write seven. So my gradient is equal to seven. So my average rate of change between that is basically going to be seven. Oh, the average rate of change for the interval two comma two plus h, ooh. Buy myself some more space. Well, again, we've still got an interval. It's saying average. We've still got my interval. So I'm now going to say that my average rate of change or my gradient in this situation is going to be f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Okay, so f of b, that's 2 plus h. So my b value is 2 plus h. Let's write that over here. b is equal to 2 plus h. And my a value is equal to 2. So let's do the bottom bit first. I think this line is going to be quite long, he says, hoping that. So put b in, that's going to be 2 plus h minus, hold on a moment, this is looking wildly familiar. Ah, oh, differentiation from first principles comes screaming back at us once again. So f of b, all we're now going to do is put this into my function here. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put 2 plus h. So it's going to become 2 plus h squared plus two lots of two plus h, minus my f of a. Again, don't just put two, we've got to put two back in here. So two squared is four, plus two lots of two is four. So we're going to take away h from there. Multiply this all out, it's going to give me four, plus four h, plus h squared, minus, uh, sorry, plus another four, plus two h, minus eight, all on h, and that's good because that two there and that negative two are gonna cancel. Let's see if there's anything more than cancel. That four plus four and negative eight are gonna go. And we're looking for that. If you can remember back to differentiation from first principles, whatever this last term is here, we need to get rid of it. Something in the rest of this will get rid of that last term because it's the only one that doesn't have a h in it. And we need to because we're gonna divide and get rid of uh, h from all of my terms. So let's go equals, well, four h, plus 2h is going to give me 6h, uh, h squared um, plus h squared, all divided by h. Now, there's a h in every single term, so I can cancel out one of the h's from there and there and there. So that's going to give me my 6 plus h. And there we go. So my average rate of change over that is 6 plus h. Yay! Then we move on to part, uh, or the last part, it says the instantaneous rate of change of f with respect to x when x equals two. Now, when it's instantaneous rate of change, all you need to do is find the gradient of the tangent at the point they've given you. So in this situation, they've given me x equals two. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna differentiate my function. So if we've got f of x is equal to x squared plus two x, then we've got f dashed of x is gonna be two x plus two. So f dashed of 2 is going to be 2 times 2 plus 2, which is 4, which is going to give me 6. That is so exciting. And um, basically, that's pretty much what we've got to do here. Now, here's another example. A balloon develops a microscopic leak and gradually decreases its volume. Its volume v centimeters cubed at time t seconds is that. Find the rate of change. Now, in this situation, it says rate of change. That's not instant, uh, sorry, that's not average rate of change. It's a rate of change. It wants a specific value when it's 10 seconds. So what have we got here? We've got my V is equal to, what have we got? 600 minus 10T minus one on 100 times T squared. Now this is only valid for T is greater than zero. And a word of warning, whenever they give you this, it is really important to understand what that means. Because later on, you might get values of t that are negative and will need to be discounted, all right? So, and obviously, volume can't be negative in this situation either, because you can't have a negative volume. What does that even mean? Um, I'm just going to pause for a moment, because I think someone's got to say something. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. But can I ask one quick favor? Can you please subscribe to my YouTube channel? Subscribing is genuinely the only way I know that someone out there is actually watching my content. Who watches maths videos other than you and possibly my mother? Seriously, if I get more than three subscribers at the end of each day, I genuinely think I'm going viral. Sad? Yes. I actually do a happy dance and the dog thinks I'm going nuts. Clicking that button really does mean the world to me. Thank you so much in advance. But enough of me already. Maybe let's go back to the loner talking to himself in a room. 
Okay, enough of that. If you can subscribe, that would be great. Um, I've got some new uh, animation software. I'm very excited. Um, okay, so find the rate of change of volume. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my rate of change. So I'm going to differentiate my V with what? Well, because it's with respect to T. Yes, it wants the rate of change of volume. A rate of change is always with respect to T of volume is equal to, well, that 600 is going to go. Minus 10T is going to give me minus 10 multiplied by, oh, sorry, subtracted by 1 on 100. That's a constant. What am I going to do? Multiply that by my power. So it's going to make that a 2 on top. And I'm going to have a T on there. And we know that that, therefore, would be cancelling down to minus 10 minus 1 on 50 times T. All right, so there's my dV by dT. Now I'm going to substitute in my T of 10 seconds. So dV by dT gives me, so my dV by dT is going to be minus 10, minus 1 on 50 times 10 is going to be 10 on 50, which is minus 1 on 5, which is going to give me, ooh, what on earth is that going to give me? Well, minus 10 and 1 fifths. What are my units? Uh, oh, well, in this situation, centimeters cubed per second, because volume is given in centimeters cubed and time is given in seconds. Ooh, is there an easier way of doing this? Uh, I should Coco using your CAS. So what I'm gonna do is actually fire up my TI Inspire. He says, let's fire up my TI Inspire and let's put it on screen. Now, I know that's gonna cover up some of my work, but uh, ignoring that, let's delete that because uh, we don't need any of that. Let's go to here. Right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define my function. So I'm actually gonna define my a uh, function of v becomes equal to, he says not typing again, v uh, becomes equal to, and that's the same as define 600 minus 10 times t. I always put the time signs in because this calculator is stupid, or all calculators are stupid really, times, and we'll say t squared. He says write an f, t squared. There we go. So I've got my v is becomes equal to, so let's see whether we can now do dv by dt. I'm going to menu, calculus, derivative. So there's my t, uh, oops, t, and there's my v, and hit enter. And lo and behold, out comes my value, which I think agrees with what we've got here. Minus t on 50, minus 10. So yep, that's exactly the same as here. How would I now be able to find the rate of change of volume at a particular time? Well, basically, I can do this, and I can substitute in t equals 10, hit enter, and there we go, we get minus 51 on 5, which just happens to be minus 10 and 1 fifth. Ooh, there are lots of other ways of being able to do this, but I like to break things down section by section, and for the classpad users, this is pretty much the same. So how am I now going to work out part two? Well, having shown you how to do it by hand already, well, you can replicate that if you want to, but for now, my calculator, I'm just going to change that to 20, and I'm going to get minus 52 on 5, which I am 98% sure is the right answer. Cool. And it says, how long could my model be valid for? Hmm, for how long could my model be valid for? Well, this goes back and says, do you understand what the basic units and the question's talking about? Because here we are talking about volume. And volume cannot be negative. Congratulations. So in this situation, what we're now trying to do is we're trying to say, well, can we find the values for where v is basically greater than zero? All right, so let's see what happens here. So, so I'm going to go solve v is greater than zero, comma t, given that t is greater than zero. Now, at the moment, I've got an exact value. Let's see what I can put that into a document settings. Let's go into approximate for the moment. Now, yes, I know that generally speaking, we would end up with the idea of uh, having exact values. And in the exam, you'd be urged with exact values. But there we go. So what we're trying to do is solve the values of v, where it's greater than zero, for t. All right, so we're trying to find those values of t. Given that, t is greater than zero. If I take out that t is greater than zero, he says, let's see what happens. There you go. So what you're saying is 
that function is going to be defined from minus 1056.77 to 57, right? So my V is going to be greater than zero for all of those values, yes? But mm, can we have a T value there of zero? Nope. Uh, so basically using my calculator is really, really good. All right, so this is something I did not know about for the uh, TI Inspire, and I'm really sorry, but the class pad, you guys don't have this. If I go here to my book, there is actually a function called average rate of change. And I go back to my book, and again, if you're ever not sure, it says expression var equals value. Now, what that's saying is that anything that's in the square bracket is optional, yeah? So what it's saying is uh, this is really your start value, and this is your end value, or sort of your end value, to get between your intervals. And I'll explain what that means now. So there's do my average rate of change. Probably didn't want it twice. So first thing I'm going to do is put in my equation, which was x squared plus 2x, comma. Now, my interval starts at 2. So I'm going to do x equals 2, comma, and my step size. Because I want to go between 2 and 3, because I'm going to go from 2 to 3. He says highlighting where he meant to do this. Then my step size is 1. So I'm going to put 1 in my calculator and hit Enter. And lo and behold, out comes my value of 7, which I am fairly sure is the value we got earlier. There we go. So there's my value of seven. Let's turn my calculator back on. What about if we're going to try the average rate of change for the interval between two and two plus h? Well, again, I can go back to my calculator. I can go up, copy that down. I've got two. And in this situation, my step size is going to be simply h. Hit enter. And what do I get? h plus six. Now, moving on to part C, uh, is there a way to do it on the calculator? Yes, that's just basically just differentiation. Because you want the instantaneous rate of change, you would just differentiate. But it's an interesting one there to know that there is an average rate of change function for your calculator. Again, blew me out of the water. And we're pretty much done. Let's just review my learning objectives. Did we understand what it means to be by average rate of change? Yes, that's basically the gradient of a line that's joining two points. Understand what it means to be instantaneous rate of change? Yes, the gradient of a tangent at a particular point. And know how to find the both for the above range of questions or before a range of questions. And I'm done. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this has been useful. Uh, let me know by leaving a comment on YouTube if you are watching. Please subscribe if you can. It means the world to me. So very few people watch mass videos and it just shows me that someone out there is watching. And hopefully I'll see you on another one. Remember, mathsguru.com is there for you with all these videos, downloadable lesson notes, and so much more. All right, take care. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.